Amateur Radio Technician Exam, Element 2. So what do I get when I become a technician, ham radio operator? Well, you get 30 megahertz and up on the amateur radio band. And you also get some limited operation on the HF bands. So the big question is, who makes up the test? And what's on the test? Well, as far as who makes up the test, that's the National Conference of Volunteer Examiner Coordinators, or commonly referred to as NCVEC. You can find out information about them at ncvec.org. So what kind of questions are going to be on the test? From here, you can go to the technician pool and download all the questions with the answers by just clicking on this link. Now, when you study off the question pool, keep in mind a 35 question test is drawn from the question pool of 426 questions and you must correctly answer a minimum of 26 questions. There are 10 segments to the test, making up a total of 35 questions. Here's a quick chart that gives you that breakdown. For instance, T1, has a total of 78 questions in it. Of those 78 questions, you'll be asked six. So what do the questions look like in the question pool? They look something like this. And even on your test, they'll be similar to this. When you take sample tests, they will always give you the identification number for the question. In this case, T5, which would be segment five, A is the group, question one. And on the question pool, you'll see brackets with the letter with the correct answer on it. So what are these different sub-elements? Sub-element T1 has such things in it as FCC rules, descriptions and definitions of the amateur radio service, and operator and station license responsibilities. There will be six questions on the exam from this area. And here's an example of a question that would be in T1. Notice the bracket 97.1, which reflects the part of the FCC rules and regulations that contains the information on this question. T2 involves operating procedure. There will be three questions from this section. Notice again the question identifier and the correct answer. Sub-element T3 is on radio wave characteristics, property of radio waves, and propagation modes. And there will be three questions from this section. And here's a common question that you see in this section with the correct answer listed. T4 involves amateur radio practices and station setup. There will be two questions from this section. And this is an example of the kind of question you'd expect to see from this section. T5 involves electrical principles, including math for electronics, electronic principles, and Ohm's law. There will be four questions from this part of the exam, and this is what you can expect to see for a question. Then we're on to T6, electrical components, semiconductors, circuit design, and component functions. You can expect to see four questions from this part, and this is the kind of question you can expect to see. T7 involves station equipment, including common transmitter and receiver problems, as well as antenna measurements, troubleshooting, basic repair and testing. You can expect to see four questions from this section, and here's an example of what you're going to see for a question. T8 includes modulation modes, amateur satellite operation, operating activities, and non-voice communications. You can expect to see four questions from this section, and here's an example. T9 involves antennas and feed lines. There's two questions from this section, and this is what you can expect to see for a question on that element. Lastly, T0, electrical safety, AC and DC power circuits, antenna installation, and RF hazards. You'll get three questions from this section, and the questions will look something like this. So where do we take practice exams? One of the most popular sites is aa9pw.com. The nice thing about this website is it gives you the questions in a format very similar to what you will actually see on the test. It also gives you a very good summation of the 10 segments in the test and your percentage in each segment so you know what to study for. qrz.com also has a very good website for doing practice tests. They're given in a similar format as aa9pw, and once you've completed the test, it'll give you a percentage and suggestions on areas where you might want to do some studying. eham.net is another website that gives a very good example of what a test will look like. When you've completed the exam, it gives you a total percentage of right and wrong. hamexam.org lets you either do flashcards, take a practice exam, or see the whole question pool. This one also, when you complete the exam, will also give you a percentage. And there are other sites as well. Now it's time to find a place to take an exam. Well, there's a good website for that as well right at the ARL website. All I have to do is go to the website, punch in my zip code, and voila, there's all the exams for my area. Exam sessions are conducted by volunteers working under the direction of the Federal Communications Commission. There will likely be a charge to take the exam. Contact the exam session administrator to determine 
the fee that applies to that exam session, which is not that expensive. So what should you bring? One legal photo ID, either a driver's license or a passport. A second form of identification, not necessarily with a photo, such as a birth certificate, social security card, library card, utility bill, bank statement, etc. As long as it shows your current address. Students may bring any of the above items and or a school ID, minor work permit, or a report card. And don't forget two number two pencils with an eraser or a pen. You can also bring a calculator with all the memories erased and the formulas cleared. If you already have an amateur radio license, you must bring a photocopy, not the original, which will be kept by the examiners, or a copy of the CSCE. You may not have any kind of written notes, as well as a check, money order, or cash to cover the exam fees. Three examiners will check your information when you get there. This is required by the FCC. Now it's on to the test. The test itself is multiple choice, and since you've taken practice exams, you should know exactly what to expect. Once you've completed the test, there will be three volunteer examiners that will check the exam. This may take a little time. Once all three examiners have checked the exam, you'll be informed of your outcome on the exam. When you pass the exam, you'll be given a certificate of a successful completion of examination, commonly referred to as a CSCE. Hold on to the CSCE until you receive your license. If you're already in licensed amateur radio operator, you can use your upgrade privileges immediately. However, if you previously don't have a license, you have to wait until the license has been generated by the ULS database, which usually takes just a couple of weeks from the date of examination to generate your license. Your license will actually show up in the mail in about four or five weeks in most cases. Then you're ready to get on the air and have some fun. I hope this video is helpful and we'll see you on the air. 73s from N9 LVS.